All right, for the last video of today, this was planned for next week, but with no Heathen Dog here, I'm going to do this this week so we can get a little bit ahead of the game. We are going to talk about... What is it? What are we talking about? Characters? I'm sorry, companions and minions. So everything in... I was going to say Bessem. <laughs> absolute power is point-based. Your attributes for your character are point-based. The attributes for your items and gear are point-based. Well, guess what? Your uh, companions and your minions are also going to be point-based. So they're going to cost your character points to uh, to have them, especially if it's part of your, your your normal character construct. So if you always have a minion around you, or you nearly always have a minion around you, somebody you can rely on to do something for you, it's going to cost you points for your character. But it's going to be a, benef a benefit to your character, right? Well, we'll find out more here in just a moment. Here we go. Oh, I didn't present, so I'll do that now. Share screen. And there's our absolute power book. Just as a reminder for folks, this is the third to last video. We'll have uh, next week, we'll have two more. We'll finish up the book next week, and then we're done with absolute power. So I hope you're enjoying the series. All right. Companions and minions. Superhero adventures are filled with a plethora of potential allies of the player's characters and of the villains. From endangered civilians to stalwart super agents to courageous soldiers to ruthless outlaws, NPCs are vital components of every fictional world's rich tapestry. <gasps> Oof. While it may seem that most people, well, it may seem that most people the heroes encounter want to outwit, pummel, or simply kill them, the vast majority are at worst indifferent, at best grateful for their efforts. Yeah, really, you don't want to take out a superhero unless you can take out a superhero. The rest of you are like, I hate those superheroes. Or, oh, thank you, guys. You're the best thing ever. And then you go and work your nine to five. Included herein is a small sampling of the potential allies and foes that characters may encounter while advent adventuring. These examples can be used as written or they can be modified to fit the setting, genre, or storyline better. Am I mistaken about what this is about? Uh, okay, you know what? I think I was mistaken about what... Oh, here we go. For further details about NPCs acquired with character points, see Companions, page 74, or Minions. Ah, okay, so it isn't going to dive into it the way I thought it did. I could have sworn that Bessem dove into this more, and I think I made that assumption here. I might be wrong, though. So, no, these are just about Companions and Minions more as NPCs. So there's a... Oh, the intro to this video is a mistake, but we'll find out. Well, you know, maybe it'll be uh, covered. Uh here in this chapter so let's look at mundane humans you and me that's right i even call the nerds nerd a mundane human while superheroes rescue all manner of beings from wounded concept spirits to runaway synthetic constructs to captured aliens earth-based adventurers will fight alongside humans more often than any other allies whatever power technology or magic the costume adventurer may wield humanity remains at the center of their conflict any of them can be enemies but most such people will be allies in pursuit of liberty and justice Bandit. Okay, we are not going to read through all of these, but let's just look at the first. We'll start with the first one here and get an idea of what it's looking at. Bandit doesn't sound like a good person. We'll find out. I had a cat named Bandit when I was a kid. Oh. More than mere thugs, yet less than hardened killers. Bandits are always on the lookout for unwary passersby so they can rob them down to their skivvies. They've been known to, I like that. Uh, they've been known to both operate solo and work in small groups. Bandits probably know the surrounding areas better than the visiting adventurers, but they can only threaten superpowered her heroes in serious numbers. Um, reminds me of uh, First Edition Shadow and the gang member. Every time I would run the game, and the couple times I played the game, people, why the hell would I want to be a gang member? They have nothing. I don't know. They can call on their um, gang. <laughs> but uh yeah people did not in my circles people did not like the game member thought it was a useless uh, archetype and didn't want anything to do with it and to be fair in in the games that i played in game masters didn't want to deal with them either so maybe that was part of the problem but anyway all right so bandit it's got a body stat of 12 mindset of eight soul stat of eight so eight twelve twelve got it uh how many points does care oh so a 30 point character so uh, Drive has got a 5 attack combat value, 4 defense combat value, uh, 50 health points, and 40 energy points. So again, you can do the math based on those. It, it's body and is it body and soul for attack and mind and soul for... I forget. No, I think it's body and soul for both. Yeah. 
Sorry, I forgot, but I did. Anyway, you can watch a previous video to find out exactly how that's done. It's got attack mastery, it's got gear, and you can select two pieces of gear. Now, because you're paying points for it, it's got that partial item protection. Not just partial, because it's not quite as good as an item. Skill group, street. So yeah, they're gonna know the street. Streetwise, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna know what I, they're gonna know where the drugs is, where the weapons is, right? And of course, because they're bandits, they're wanted. Even if that individual person might not be wanted, belong to a street gang that's wanted, you know, it's MS thirteen kind of thing. Thirty character points. All right. So we got a business professional. We got a crime boss. How many points is he? 75 points. Okay, so yeah, the crime boss is going to be worth more points than the uh, than the typical bandit, right? Because he's usually leading the bandits. Does the crime boss have any sort of, uh, how do I say, get out of jail? I don't want to say called get out of jail free, but, you know, always somehow avoids prosecution ability here. Features, foreign language, gear, various, skill group, skill group, skill group, tough. Hmm. Well, wealth might be part of that. 10 million, wow. Shortcoming, empathy, minus two. <laughs> yes, no empathy. Okay. Uh, huh. I I would I would if I could if there's a way to do it I'm sure there is with the points I'd swap this uh, somehow make them slippery like just can't make the law stick. Uh, cultist because what good set you know what good villain isn't a cultist? Hacktivist. It's funny our our what was it uh. Cyber awareness training that we have to do for work now includes hacktivists. What's the difference between a hacktivist and an activist? I don't, or a hacker? I don't care. <laughs> like I, I don't. I don't think that's an important distinction. Uh, what's that? Corrected to crime syndicate. Uh, informant, because you got to have a title till somewhere. Who's your CI? Intrepid reporter. Not just your everyday common garden variety reporter. No, it's your intrepid reporter. Uh, MTU officer. I'm just seeing if there's anything here. I, I'm going through this a little slowly because I want to see if there's something in here I want to really look at. Uh, oh, here we go. Puritan cyborg. Boom, we're going to take a look at that. That just sounds interesting. Max is always talking about Borgs. Well... It's not a normal human, so we're going to look at it. On any Earth that produces metahumans, some mundane folk will naturally become resentful. Not all superhero worlds create such menaces in large numbers, but human nature will not be denied. No, sir, it will not. Ironically, super technology is necessary to create the ultimate soldier for such movements. On Sentinel Earth, that toxic union of advanced science and regressive belief, oh, come on now, takes the form of Puritan cyborgs. I don't believe that humanocentric I'm not nearly as crazy about this as Heathen Tug, but I do not believe that a humanocentric belief is regressive. Sorry, you're never going to convince me of that. <laughs> so, you know, human first, I would always be that. Now, I might not be wipe out everything else in the meantime, but if I have to make a decision based on humanity or life as a whole, humanity is going to win. If that's regressive, well, I'm happy to regress on you. On Sentinel Earth, that toxic union of advanced ideas, regrets, uh, for Puritan cyborgs, you're speaking my language, pal. You're speaking my language. These ruthless super soldiers embody a movement of fear and hate, determined to wipe out the many human menace. So, okay, so this is the uh, super soldiers. This is the coalition of this, uh, <laughs> this universe. Again, eh, me personally, I don't think I want to wipe out the many meta human menace. But if the average meta human has superpowers and is much more powerful than the average person, there is going to be a natural distrust. And maybe there needs to be a system of identifying them. Huh? At the same time, I think it's like the Second Amendment. Just because you've got a gun doesn't mean you kill everybody. Just because you've got superpowers doesn't mean you're going to hurt everybody. Eh, you know. So, uh, would, yeah, would metahuman powers fall under the Second Amendment in the United States? Huh. That's an interesting one. <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on. Armed with advanced military gear, the superhuman strength and toughness of Puritan cyborgs represents the real menace. These prototype models are uh, uh, obvious to sight 
Okay, these prototype models are obvious to sight and magnetic scanners and vulnerable to electric attacks. Very much reminds me of like uh, Rift's Borg, at least the, 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 not all Borg, but the quintessential Borg that you're used to seeing, that big red one. Uh, um, so we've got eight body, eight mind, eight soul. Interesting that it's ten levels. It's got eight attack combat value, six defense. I mean, it's not bad, but it, it just doesn't seem to be super mega awesome. Am I missing something here in the points? I mean, yeah, it's only 50 character points. So, okay, if you're playing a very low-powered game, or how do I want to say this? Um, I mean, the average person is, what, 25 points, if I remember correctly, from the first, uh, when we started covering the game? So, yeah, it's it's twice as powerful as a normal person, but most superheroes you're playing 75 100 points if not more so this is only 50 points now before somebody puts it in the comments or into chat yes i know this is a starting point absolutely it's a starting point you you know what this isn't enough power for you bump it up baby make it 75 points make it 100 make it 300 points do your thing but uh i think that uh, probably because they come in numbers makes them more menacing than uh because this this makes it sound like oh these things are gonna be this is gonna be tough. Eh. Uh, it's got some armor, armoring thirty. That is pretty tough. So I'll, I'll give it that. Augmented. It's detectable through electromagnetism, so they're not gonna hide. Uh, brutal, lethal blow. I don't remember what brutal means uh, off the top of my head. You can look it up. Uh, lethal blow, lightning reflexes. Okay, that's pretty good for fighting. Um, connected to the Puritan Protectorate. That's okay. So we can get some gear. We can get uh, some help. Get somebody to help us out uh, when things get uh, sticky. Yeah, up to 25 pieces of gear. Wow. 25 pieces of gear. Whew. Skill group military. So that means you're going to know military tactics. Remember, skill groups in this game aren't like a specific skill. It's to represent, okay, skill group military means you can do military things. Let's move on because we don't want to dive into the idea that we have to have 400 skills in the game. And then super strength. Oh, two tons. Okay, that's a pretty cool one. Can lift two tons plus twenty unarmed damage, detectable through electromagnetism. Again, I don't know why that has to be on there twice, but okay. I have to look that. Why? Why would that be on there twice? That's an interesting. So, he's detectable when he's using his strength and when he exists. <laughs> Is that what that means? I don't know. Now he's got a bunch of defects, though. He's got an Achilles heel. Oh, this is what, okay, you know, never mind. This is what brings his points down so much. He's got an Achilles heel. He's marked, uh, so that means he's cyborg. Uh, marked, if I don't remember the exact verbiage of it, but it means that uh, somebody's looking for him. Obligated, so he has to support the peer to protector. It says you got to do something. You got to do it. Social fault bigoted. Okay, so because this is built into the character, I scroll up here and say, got it. These are, yes, these are hateful people all right you know we people can parse the word bigoted all they want you know everybody's bigoted but this is a one point flaw which means no it actually affects how the player acts and sees things this isn't just somebody who says something you know maybe says like you know an off-color joke or whatever and you want to call them bigoted no this is somebody who actually believes that you know uh, metahumans and i'm going to use a real world thing here but uh sort of uh metahumans are inherently less intelligent than than humans you know so, something like that unappealing <laughs> people look at them like, oh you're creepy here's cybernetic horror <laughs> got it um definitely not in riffs and riffs they'd be like, you're cool you're cool man that's my story and i'm sticking to it vulnerability again electromagnetic fields don't want don't, don't walk around magnets and wanted metahuman organizations and numerous governments don't like these guys all right so Got a Reaper Knight, Eagle Core Guardian, a Senator. Oh, a Shinobi. How many points is the Shinobi? So the Ninja is 60. 60 points for a Ninja. He's got Social Fault? Oh, just, just pick one. You got a Social Fault. Pick one. Yeah, whatever. Uh, and you can take a look at the uh, abilities there. Wow, look at that body. Hey. Uh, soldier. Again, some of these are just going to be normal people, right? Stubborn could be an edge or an obstacle. Oh. Okay. Mark means people can see something, makes them different, can't hide that. Okay. 
Is that what it means? I thought I thought it meant that. Uh, oh, I'm thinking wanted, aren't I? I thought I thought marked meant um, that uh, that you know, affected you've been marked for death, or you've been marked for a warrant or whatever. But uh, okay, thank you for the correction. Street tough. Street tough. Oh, this is just it's just another type of bandit. Just another little brigand. What's kind of cool about this is he didn't just do brigand and call it a day. No, he's got the brigand, street urchin, the 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 street tough, or whatever it was called, bandit. I'm sorry, it was bandit. Um, I like the fact that he's got different examples in here. So if you're running the game or if you need something quickly, you just pull it out of the book and go. Obviously, and I'll keep saying this, you can edit these things to your heart's content, and you can just start make your own from scratch. But I like the fact that uh, these are in here. Lots of different companions and uh, and minions. Some which I don't even know what it means. What's a Dragar soldier? Don't even know what the hell that is. But it's there. Can you read it? Hopefully you can. Yeah. Uh, well, I can't get it on the screen perfectly. But a temple supplicant. The lackey. The temple lackey. Uh, Thulian. That does not sound good at all. Frosh, huh? Froshman corpse. <laughs> I lived in Germany for eleven years, and I used used to <laughs> words should get like that long. Like, dude, what are you doing? Put a break in there. Hyphen something. Uh, Drugard Norse undead. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. What are they here? The uh, different resources out of mass production. Super soldiers. Oh, okay. They don't want. Uh, Thule produces now. It's funny because my understanding is this should be pronounced Thule. There's no way is it Thulean. I'm just gonna pronounce it Thule for now, unless somebody tells me otherwise. But uh, like the Air Force Base is Thule. It's in Greenland. You can look it up. Uh, produces a small number of enhanced Draugar soldiers that display inherent resilience and formidable physiques. As inhuman creatures, these soldiers pay the price in disturbing appearance and terrible nightmares. L little dwarves, huh? A secret service agent. Obviously, this is one of the uh, factions. Froschman's Corp. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yep, my 11 years of German did not help at all. I don't mean of, Germ of living in Germany. I took no German. Took French and Russian. Uh, Urban Warden Cliff, Agent Warden Tech. Okay, meet Caliburn. Non-humans. All right, now let's look at some non-humans. So who are these Allurians? Let's take a look at Allurians. Or Iluron. Uh, not all aliens are our enemies. Well, you sure? Oh, wait, I don't belong to that group. Never mind. <laughs> when invaders set in the Earth, strange visitors can be our most valuable allies. Iluron officers are military advisors from the Stellar Alliance. An enlightened democracy spanning dozens of star systems. Dedicated, capable, and trained to understand the enemy. Whether facing how colonizers or the unthinkable legion. Is that really the name? Unthinkable legion. This is why superheroes in comic books sometimes annoy me. <laughs> These officers are the heart of the famed sovereignty defense. Oh, sovereignty defense force. Their knowledge ensures that humanity will remain free of alien aggression. While feline... Oh, hey, nice... Ilurons resemble humans to a remarkable degree, and personal attachments between the two species are as common as frequent, frequency of contact allows. I think there's an underlying double entendre there that we don't want to get into. I'm just saying. Uh, so body, mind, soul. So pretty good body there. Combat technique, brutal, lethal blow, lightning reflexes. How many points are these guys? 75, wow. So obligated and wanted. So how to regime? So that's a that's a one rank of wanted. So it's not like it's going to happen every second of the day. But you know that's that's a pretty big organization to be wanted by. And obligated. Hey, they got to work for the Stellar Alliance. So no, 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 Kevin. This is superheroes, not anime. <laughs> Bessem is anime, sir. But no, your your point is taken. <laughs> uh. So anywho. Mulligan, get two rerolls per session. These words are called. Uh, these words are called uh, compos composita. Yeah, we Germans really good at concatenating nouns to make a new noun. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, 
Germany is the only country I lived in where I didn't at least partially learn the language. Because everybody, everywhere I went spoke English. And they kind of don't have the patience. Unlike some of the other places where they have the patience. Come on, you can tough out. Like, I even learned Arabic when I lived in Kuwait. And I'm like, okay, you can tough it out. You can do it. You can do it. Germany's like, ah, just speak English. Okay. <laughs> uh, Dark Queen's Eternal Legion, Grey Operative. And here's the Howd Soldier, Iron Walker. When drones are not enough, masterminds build synthetic servants that run the gamut from construction workers to obedient soldiers. Iron Walkers are both. Not sentient yet. Intelligent enough to obey complex commands from their creator and master, Iron Duke. Interesting. Not sentient, but intelligent enough to obey complex commands. Huh. With unshakable loyalty, Iron Walkers lack creative, creative impulses. Oh, their house, Karita. <laughs> Battletech fans know what I'm talking about. Uh, with unshakable loyalty, Iron Walkers lack creative impulses or conversational talent, but they are fantastic assistants for advanced engineering projects. Well, partially House Karina. Uh, they are also capable of, capable of fighting machines as fearless as any drone and armed with deadly laser weaponry. Wait and see all the Capellan jokes enter, enter chat now. <laughs> uh, all right. Whoa, resilient. Aging, disease, lack of air, lack of sleep, lack of sustenance, pain, poisons, complete... Holy... Look at how many points that's worth. Or it costs. Level 14. It's actually level 7, but costs level 14. Wow. Wow. Because it happens when you know, you're an iron worker. Or, sorry. Yeah, iron walker. Uh, super strength, 500 kilograms. With super soldier stronger. And has an arm laser. Of course it does. Okay, marked as a combat robot. Nemesis, Red Phoenix in the guard. No healing. Oh, that's a good point. It is a, basically a robot, right? So it doesn't get to heal. Shortcoming to agility. Shortcoming to charisma. Shortcoming to creativity. Yep. House Karita. <laughs> Special requirement. Uh, electric energy. Wanted. Global law enforcement. Wow. That's a three rank. That means this happens constantly. Like everybody wants them. Everybody's going to try to turn them in. Oh my god, a lot more Martian Titan, Ascended Titan, Matthews Link Man. Eh, I don't care. Uh, Parasite Spy, what is that? Semi fluid, Yurdith, inhabit a, and control the bodies of organic hosts. This variant is diversely trained but is most adept at infiltration and assassination. Your despised prefer to take over mid-ranking members of intelligence networks to stay under the radar. Once they have caused sufficient disruption, the spies leave trails of corpses in their wake. This is just creepy, dude. Okay, this is, uh, this is officially creepy. Pretty high stats. Mostly in mind and souls, you can see there. Attack, defense, health, damage, multiplier. Absorption. That sucks. Don't, don't absorb me, please. 15 damage to health points. That, no, don't do that. It's got armor. Wait. Armor rating 10 and armor, armor rating optimized. Why would these be in a... Okay, I don't understand this off the cuff. Maybe somebody in the comments can explain it. Why are there two different armors? And the reason why I'm saying this, couldn't these just be limiters and enhancements that are stacked onto this one? I don't know. That's, that's, the, way I, I, that's the way I would think it would be done, is it'd be just armor, and then you just stack on your enhancements and limiters but maybe I'm, I'm missing the purpose behind that but anyway combat technique elasticity extra actions oh my god massive damage unarmed needle blade with needle blades okay mind control well yeah you kind of got that from the description so there you go skill group adventuring detective military though that helps with its whole uh, espionage nonsense telepathy Okay, yeah, these are pretty... How many... Okay, 100... That's it? Just 100 character points? Okay, what are these defects? Achilles heel sonic attacks. Okay, play... Play alarms. Play play the Star Trek klaxon. Bane to loud sounds. So, once again, hit by the, the sound thing. Remember, a Bane is... Uh, 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 oh, actually, no. No, no, no. I was thinking... Oh, my God. I keep wanting to do boons and banes from Free League, but that, it's not the dice thing. So I don't know what the difference between Achilles heel and Bane is, but uh, either way, it's sonic attacks hurt these dudes. Skeleton in a closet, alien spy dominating in, innocent victim. 
Why would that be a uh, a defect? Alien spy dominating innocent victim. That's interesting. I mean, I see it. it's obviously in the background of the creature, but why would that be a points worthy defect? <laughs> and unique defect must bond to a host body. Second armor has a variant component for elemental damage. Yeah, but couldn't that just be added to the... Uh, I mean, is, is it two separate armors then? Like, this is... Arm, like, this is your physical armor, and this is like a shield or some sort? Because it just seems... I, again, I could be completely wrong. It just seems that... That they would be the same attribute. But I, I might be misunderstanding. I, I mean, I do see what you're trying to say. Yes, I, I'm just... I guess I'm trying to picture it better. All right, uh, vampire. Nobody likes vampires. Werewolf, nope. We don't like World of Darkness. Young embodiment. Zombies. Zombies are too over you. Stop using zombies. No skeletons? Of course no skeletons. I'm telling you, man. There's a bunch of skeleton haters around here. Yes to do. Okay, okay, got it. They're different armors. Okay, that, that makes sense then. Uh, animals. And... You're going to still use size templates. You're going to have stats. We're not going to read through all of this. Yes, we're at the point of the book where we're doing more overview than we are uh, deep dive because you guys, by now, if you've actually watched the series from the beginning, should be understanding how the points work. We're just showing you all the different things that the book puts in here. And yes, I'll say this 100 times. I'll say it 101 more times. You can do all this from scratch. Yes, if you've seen one, some regard you've seen them all. Okay, yeah, you make armors, for, uh, make animals from points, whatever. But let's let's show off uh, some of what's here and some things that maybe you didn't consider. Some things I didn't consider, like the stacking of the armor, you know, that we had uh, up up above. And what was another one? The uh, oh, not the zombie. Where is it? Not the vampire. Nobody cares about vampires. Uh, the parasite spy. Like I, I find this to be interesting. I'm not saying it's wrong or I wouldn't do this. I just I didn't even think about that. I didn't. Didn't think that was necessary to have skeleton in a closet. But hey, you know what? You got some points for it, so why not? <laughs> and, and gave you some more attributes up here, some uh, some more bonuses because of that. So. Uh, so we'll take a look at some animals here. So uh, alligator's got a body of mind, uh, mind of uh, one, soul of one. So apparently it's not very lucky. Combat value of five. Damage per attack, 20 plus 10. Health points, 50. Armor rating of 10. Yeah, it's got kind of nice thick hide. And it's got a pretty decent water speed of 30 kilometers per hour. Uh, isn't body plus mind plus soul equal to hit points? Was it? Somewhere around here. Oh, got him way off. Where's that little chart? There's a nice chart that this game gives. Do, 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 and I don't remember what page it's on. Do, 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 do. I don't think it's in the quick play. I think it's in... Maybe it is in the quick play. Oh, here we go. Somewhere around here. There we go. Hit points. Do, 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 do. Or it's on the character sheet. Recovery rate. Health points. No, that's just recovery rate. Uh, weapon ACV. Target number range. I guess it isn't there. Game around swimming speed. Let's check the character sheet out. So 338. Let's do 330. Wow. It's a long index. Come value to energy points, body, health points. Health points is uh, body and soul. So it's not all three. It's body and soul. Combat value is the one that's all three. So here, I'll zoom in on that for anybody who wants to see. It's a nice little Venn diagram here. I actually like that diagram. So your health points, you see the health points here is intermixed with uh, body and soul. All right, so I don't remember what page I was on because I was dumb. Um, I typed in. Oh, God, we're way past that. Oh, animals. Okay. Oh, actually, this is the last page. Okay, so we're just going to look at some animals here. Uh, frogs, because you have to have a frog in your game, because you got to kiss the frog, turn it into a prince. It's got a body of two, <laughs> a mind of one, a soul of one, 
uh, combat value of one, this frog is going to whoop your butt. Attack damage is minus 40. Oh, poor froggy. Health points 15. Please don't step on the frog. It can jump 10 meters. Wow, 10 meters? Uh, its size template is fine, which is on the smaller side. And it's worth less than zero. <laughs> it's worth less than zero points. Really? So wait, can I get points back by having a plague of frogs? Just asking. Asking for a friend. Or a plague of hamsters. <laughs> uh, honey badger. Honey badger don't give shit. Um, seven body, three mind, five soul. Wow, it's got soul, man. Soul, man. Uh, 15 minus 10. Armor ratings, 15. It's fast. It's fast. Oh, oh I was going to say it's fast twice, but it's not. Okay. And a tiger shark, because you know what? We want to fear the water even more. 20 plus 10 damage. Wow. Ouch. 60 hit points. Height and smell. Sucks to be you. And water speed, 30 kilometers per hour. I bet you you can't swim that fast. I'd rather fight one alligator than two cats. Sir, you own cats. <laughs> uh... So, all right. One armor can be natural, the other is removable. Okay. Either way, no, I, I, I get the concept, guys. I wasn't trying to start a fight or anything there. I just had just didn't realize what was going on, but uh, what, what you guys are saying makes sense. And ultimately, the idea of this, uh, of providing this to folks, even if we're a little wrong, I'm not trying to teach you literally how to play the game. This is to folks, not the folks in chat, but the folks who watch this later. I'm not trying to teach you every aspect of the game so you don't have to buy the book. It's to show you what's in here, give you some explanation of what we see is in here, learn it ourselves to some degree, and uh, convince you that whether this is a game you want to buy or not. I've had a bunch of people tell me, yeah, I'm not interested in this. I've had a few people tell me, hey, this looks cool, and I bought the game because of you. Awesome. Be exposed to more things. And, you know, think for yourself whether whether it's for you or not for you. Um, next week is the last week. There'll be two videos next week. But it'll be the last week. I'm going to be covering chapter 12 uh, for both of them. So we're going to talk about uh, playing superheroes. The kind of what does it mean? Hmm. I'm going to I'm gonna have to read through that chapter before... The episode because I don't know I don't think I want to read every paragraph of this. Um, and then what page is that? Two ninety six. Questionnaire. What do I have? It says chapter twelve, three hundred, three twenty one. Overview, not read. Okay. And then we'll finish up. So yeah, we'll do an overview of all, all this. Yeah, I'm not reading all that. But it's just to give you an idea of what... So now that we understand what a character is, how to make a character, and so forth, you know, what is the genre of the game? What is it that you're looking for? We're going to... Yes, definitely not reading all of that. But according to this, I am reading 323 to 326. Why is that? Mythic heroes are the modern gods. It says I'm supposed to read this, and I don't know why. That seems like a lot of reading. Maybe. We'll see. I'm going to definitely take a look at it for next week because I think it's good stuff. Um, you know, for example, get this off the screen here, uh, like Bear talks about it. And, he, you know, I think Heathen Dog and Bear, uh, Bear the Gen X GM, check out his channel. I think Heathen Dog and Bear agree, agree a lot when it comes to superheroes. Like, they both they both have this, this um, preference that superheroes are supposed to be superheroic. Good guys, constantly, right? Like the epitome, the, the idyllic, the Superman. I struggle with that because I, I don't feel that way. It's one of the reasons why maybe I don't get into superheroes as much. Now, I'm not mocking them. I don't think that they're wrong necessarily. I'm just saying, like, I prefer things like Spawn, the Punisher, um, you know, <laughs> whatever. I don't know a lot of superheroes, sorry. You know, I prefer, you know, the, the, the movie Batman over, say, maybe what his idyllic sense is supposed to be and so forth. Because I think that, uh, you know what, if you're dealing with superheroes, super villains, I would be the guy that would put the explosive the explosive collar on a supervillain's neck and wouldn't feel bad i'd sleep well i'd sleep very soundly at night you know uh and i'm talking specifically supervillain not anybody with superpowers so uh, reading what i know that that section is going to talk about is it's going to talk about like the premise of this game which i think is very interesting now you can do this in any game but i think it's very interesting for this one is if you have this power it's called absolute power for a reason if you have this power how does that power corrupt you 
And how do you avoid that corruption? How do you stay away from being corrupted? How do you keep that idyllic sense that, that uh, I'm the good guy? You know, this guy couldn't do it. I wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> if, if I had superpowers and I could go out and just wipe out every supervillain, and I mean that, wipe out, I would do it. I'm the guy that, does, that thinks that the, the moral conundrum, would you kill Hitler as a baby? Yes. I'd kill Stalin as a baby, too. <laughs> I'd kill Mao as a baby, Pol Pot as a baby. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, so, uh, and, and, and I'd sleep well at night. Now, I get it. It's supposed to be a moral conundrum. And when you're playing a superhero game, like I said, I don't think that they're wrong. I think that we need to talk about that. I think we need to say, hey, you're superheroes. You're supposed to be the best of the best, the epitome, the top. You're supposed to be the moral example, even if it hurts sometimes. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. So, um, Anyway, I hope you like this coverage. Oh, let me put this up. I got to do like, subscribe, share. Thank you. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this so far. Um, I, I, I'm saying it over and over again, but uh, you know these videos aren't getting a lot of views. I know that a lot of uh, the people that follow us aren't you know into absolute power or Bessem for various reasons, and probably a lot of the people that are into absolute power and Bessem aren't into us, especially because of our past. I you know I don't shy away from that. I don't I don't care if that's your reason. I think you're being shallow minded, but uh, you know, but if you're not watching because you're just not interested in the game, I get it. But you're you, but. Those of you who have watched it, I hope you find this interesting. Uh, hopefully we're covering enough without droning on and being boring about everything here. Hope, hope, hope we're presenting it to you in a way that you find, you know, you, find, you either find some nuance to it that you didn't think about, or you've decided that this is the game for you or not for you, because that's really the intent. So hopefully you're getting that out of it. Next week, we're going to talk about how to play superhero characters in the Bessem, the Sentinel Earth. I said Bessem, the absolute power Sentinel Earth universe. And I look forward to talking to everybody then.